Good day everyone, Braden here coming to you with a very special video. Today isn't just a big day for Florida, it's a big day for the entire United States as today passenger train service is starting between Orlando and Miami via privately funded inner city passenger rail. This is the first privately funded inner city passenger rail service that has been attempted and accomplished here in America in over 100 years. As you can see, we are here at the Orlando International Airport, but today we are not heading on board a plane. Behind the tower here, you can see there is a building called the train station. Today we are doing a round trip on one of the first trains from Orlando to Miami and then from Miami and back. So let's head on over to the train station and see what's going on. Parking at the Orlando International Airport has been a bit hectic lately with the A, B, and C terminal garages reaching capacity most mornings. Thankfully, I got in early enough to snag a spot at B parking and headed inside the main terminal. There you'll find train icons and other signage directing you towards the train station and Brightline. Connecting the main portion of the airport to the train station as well as the C terminal is an automated people mover which arrives every few minutes. Hop Hopping on board and heading under the airplane overpass, soon enough, not just the train station, but the Brightline train itself was in view, sporting a brand new sponsored Visit Orlando wrap. Once inside the train station, you'll head up an escalator, turn the corner, and... All right, guys, here we are. I can't believe this day is finally here. At the entrance to the train station, you'll find kiosks to grab tickets, as well as a place to drop off large bags. Most bags guests bring on Brightline are considered carry-ons that can be stored above the seats or on racks in the cabins. Then it was time to head into the main part of the station. Past ticketing and security, you'll notice for this opening day, they had some temporary fixtures up for the grand opening. Normally what you'll first see here, there'll be an open area and then there will be the market, a gift shop selling food as well as some Brightline specific merchandise like this toy version of the train that we're about to get on. Past the market is a general seating area and the Mary Mary Bar, named after two of Henry Flagler's wives who were both named Mary. Brightline stations pay homage to Flagler as he, over 100 years ago, established the Florida East Coast Railway Brightline is utilizing today to take us on this historic journey. Off to the left side of the station is the Smart Lounge, a seating area for lower cost fare passengers, and then off to the right side of the station is the Premium Lounge for the higher paying guests. Inside the Premium Lounge, there was a spread on a table featuring lots of small bites. Also inside the Premium Lounge is a self-service cocktail bar, as well as a wall with pastries, cold beverages, waters, and a coffee machine. If you are going to splurge on the Premium Service, I suggest that you arrive early at the station to take advantage of these at station benefits. At long last, the call to board was made for the 8.30 a.m. train from Orlando to Miami. What made this moment extra meaningful for me was I had stood in this exact spot only months earlier when hard hats and high vis were still required on site as the station was a construction site. So to see the construction of the station complete and boarding a train from Orlando to Miami, it was quite momentous. I love having my own automobile. I'm sure a lot of you do too, but being able to sit back and relax and actually enjoy traveling to South Florida, that is something new for this state. And in this video, we are gonna break down every aspect of this experience so you can determine if that added enjoyment is worth the cost for you. Once on board the premium cabin on bright pink, this is one of my favorite features on the train, you guys, and it's so simple, it sounds silly, but the automatic sliding doors, they are so cool. The double sliding doors they have connecting the smart cabins make this effect even cooler. We really are living in the future, aren't we? Inside the premium cabin, there is a 2-1 seating configuration where on one side there is a column of single seats with double seats on the reverse. Throughout all the cabins on Brightline are some seats that face each other with a table in between. Extra dice for couples, families, and friends who want to converse during their ride. Also, it should be noted the seats on premium, they are a bit nicer feeling and less rigid than the ones in the smart cabin. Throughout the train are outlets below the seats so you can plug in, get your laptop out on a train table, and get some work done while you are traveling. Or you can use your tray table to enjoy some breakfast. My car had a lot of empty seats, so I had one tray with food on it and another 
for working on this video you're watching right now. When you board premium from Orlando or from Miami, depending on the time of day, a small assortment of snacks are distributed. This was today's breakfast spread. Very shortly after boarding, the train was off and away, headed for the Atlantic coast at 8.38 a.m. One less than welcome feature of this train that you'll notice throughout this video, while the newly wrapped bright pink train looks cool from the outside, the sponsored wrap covers all the passenger accessible windows, obstructing views of the beautiful Florida landscape throughout our seven hour round trip. Speaking of travel times, Brightline says that the Orlando to Miami trip with stops along the way in West Palm Beach, Boca Raton, Fort Lauderdale, and Aventura results in an estimated total trip time of three hours and 30 30 minutes. Today, we are testing that. Insofar as the train speeds go, while compared to trains in other parts of the world, this would hardly be considered high speed, the Brightline in Florida does travel at a pretty significant clip from Orlando to the East Coast, a portion of the route which has zero at grade crossings. We were going much faster than the cars on State Road 528 that this track parallels, traveling at speeds of up to 125 miles per hour. It was so cool to experience this part of the route that I covered the construction of for years, from dirt to fully completed railway. Just unbelievable. In what felt like just moments, we had arrived at the Cocoa Curve, meeting up with the Florida East Coast Railway. As now we were off of Brightline's dedicated railway and on to the FEC route, which has hundreds of at-grade crossings and prior to today was just used for freight. In order to get to Miami on time, nothing could be blocking our route on those hundreds of at-grade crossings down the east coast of Florida. There was a close call at 9.10 a.m. as we approached Suntree, south of Coco, when a giant lumber truck decided he thought that he could make it. Our engineer laid on the horn for a good 20 plus seconds and was forced to slam on the brake. The truck cleared the oncoming traffic and pulled out into the median of US-1 right as we went past and our train began picking up back to regular speed. There was another stoppage 40 minutes later, Brightline said was due to technical difficulties. We have stopped for some but we also stopped very hurriedly in that case, so it's possible there was another roadblock that Brightline had to wait to clear the track. The train did slow to a crawl two other times before we made it to West Palm Beach, but these were routine as Brightline waited for drawbridges to give us the right of way. I finished up my breakfast and before long, we had arrived at West Palm Beach. A big question for folks going from Orlando to Miami is how long are these stops along the way? There's quite a few of them. The West Palm Beach stop was only around four minutes long and the others were even shorter. Some of them we only stopped for around 30 seconds. As we continue south to Boca Raton, I want to give you an idea of what the train is like in person, what it sounds like. The ride is smooth with that running over train tracks rhythm to it. The new Brightline track is extremely smooth, while the existing FEC track is a little more rickety. I'd say it's akin to Amtrak if you've ever done that. The occasional train horn, of course, also adds to the auditory Brightline experience. Arriving at Boca Raton, Tone at 1123 for a quick stop. We were back rolling by 1126, so we were only there for a few minutes. Next, we are headed to Fort Lauderdale. Here's a quick look at the snack tray in our premium cabin if you're in the mood for some food. And I'll also include a look at the food and beverage handout, which lists sweet and savory snacks, sodas, water, and adult beverages for sale on the train. These items are free with a premium ticket and are sold for a small fee in the smart cabin. At 11.42, we arrived at Fort Lauderdale and were back moving a minute later. One of the newest stations, Aventura, was another quick stop at 11.58. Finally, at 12.16 p.m., we arrived in Miami, making the total southbound trip from Orlando to Miami three hours and 38 minutes. Mind you, this includes one or possibly two near-miss Florida Man incidents and two bridge-related stoppages, as well as stops at every Brightline station along the route. When I announced my arrival to Miami, many of our viewers online remarked that this travel time isn't much different than a car in regular traffic. As I've highlighted, Related in previous Brightline videos, and I will again in this video, the Brightline isn't a one-for-one -one race trying to beat the car in minutes.
minutes to destination. Brightline offers an onboard experience where around me business people were getting work done and families were enjoying each other's company. The drive on the interstate along this route is not what most would call a good time. Both car and train modes between Orlando and Miami do have a big liability though. With both, you run the risk of a crash making your three hour car or train journey into more like a four or five hour journey. Where Brightline really stacks up well here is with Orlando Miami flights, which are quite popular down here in Florida. With Orlando to Miami flights, the Brightline does take longer, but it costs less without the very cramped quarters. Of course, you could get a very low cost fare flight, but of course there's gonna be added fees with that and it's not going to be particularly enjoyable. So once you factor in all the air travel hassle with security and the rest, I'd argue that these two modes are much closer in time to destination than the in-air travel time suggests, and the quality of that time spent traveling is better when you are on Brightline. Once at the Miami station, I dropped by the Premium Lounge, which has an even larger spread than it did the last time I rode Brightline out of the station a year ago. There was a table with tons of pastries, I tried several of these, they were excellent, and there was another table with charcuterie, snacks, and even Brightline branded cookies, which I thought was interesting. Before I knew it, my train was ready to return to Orlando. For the return trip, a lunchtime snack container was distributed, that's what you're looking at here. The return trip trip to Orlando was pretty uneventful and enjoyable, but we didn't make as decent of a pace as we did southbound. Northbound in the 110 and 125 mile per hour max zones, our speed averaged out to only around 70 miles per hour. Combined with a few slowdowns and stoppages which seemed routine, our train which departed Miami on time and made quick work of the stops in South Florida somehow arrived to Orlando 20 minutes late. For a final trip time for this leg of three three hours and 56 minutes. Employees on board apologized for the 20 minute delay and said that part of the slowdown was due to the fact that we were utilizing so many at grade crossings around the time that school was getting out, creating many slow zones. The slow going through the new portion of track which doesn't have these crossings might have had to do with it currently only being single tracked. Because of this, trains headed each direction must vary their speeds properly to give other trains a proper window to run the route. Once I disembarked, I watched Bright Green depart from Miami with regular Orlando to Miami service now well underway. Check out this awesome welcome art that they put on the steps leading back to the station. Now it's time for the review. So everyone, what did I think of my experience today on the Bright Line? I would say overall, I really, really enjoyed it. It was a very emotional experience for people who've been working on it this past decade, and the day is finally here where now you can travel from Orlando to Miami and back on a train. There are going to be criticisms over the time that it takes to get between the two. And there are people online saying, Braden, why can't it do the trip in two hours or something like that? A great example would be when I was saying the train had to slow down because there was a lumber truck trying to merge onto the highway, things like that because of all the at-grade crossings that you have along the East Coast on the existing Florida East Coast Railway. If the train was going any faster, obviously, that would raise the probability of collision there. And that's already a problem that Brightline is dealing with enough of. So by no means is the system perfect. There's a lot more that could be done with rail here in the United States. United States. But when you go online and you see all these people posting maps of high speed rail throughout the country, it's always ideas. What if they did this? What if they did that? It's always just talk. Here are the first people in 100 years who actually did it and they are still only getting started. This track right here behind me will one day go all the way to Tampa and hopefully also to Disney along the way. And also in a press conference today, Brightline shared this map of some other cities around the country that they want to connect that they feel are too long to drive, too short to fly. So this is only a proof of concept of what is to come. And for a proof of concept, I would say this is pretty awesome. Now, will this experience in its current state last? The pricing isn't super competitive, so it is a good question there. So the big question is, would I recommend doing this service Orlando to Miami? Absolutely, I would. I would highly recommend that
that you try it out. And I would suggest that you do the smart ticket, not the premium, unless there was something that you saw that I experienced today on premium that you think that you really need. Otherwise, I would just go with the smart class, save some money there and just see if you like it and then go from there. Especially if you live in the central Florida area, imagine doing a day trip. That's something you can do now where you can just head down to South Florida for the day and come back and not have to be stressed out about when do we have to start driving back? We're going to be driving for seven, eight hours today. All you have to do is sit back and relax. You can even sleep on the train. And that's something that's really cool about this for those who want to do a round trip from Miami up to the central Florida area or vice versa. Capping off this opening day for the Brightline rail system between Orlando and Miami, I'm going to go head out to State Road 528 and I'm going to film a portion of the track as the last Brightline leaves the Orlando station for the day. And hopefully we'll catch a cool sunset. Anyways, guys, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video today. Be sure to subscribe with those notifications on so you don't miss videos like this in the future. Also, be sure to check out mickeyviews.com slash support if you'd like to find out how you can support the creation of these videos. They take a lot of work. Thank you all so much for watching live from the Orlando International Airport where I just rode the bright line. A great, great opening day. This is Brayden. Thank you so much for watching. Have a magical day.